Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here. Welcome to our last live stream on Tuesday. It's not our last live stream, but it's our last Tuesday live stream. It is August 25th. It's a beautiful day. I got rid of my mustache. I'm hairless on my lipless. Lipless? Yeah, on my lipless. lipless. I'm hairless on my lipless. <laughs> And uh, we're going to have a good day today. Uh, Dustin and I went out to a place called Natural Encounters here in Central Florida. And uh, they have a whole bunch of wonderful birds. I mean, hundreds and hundreds of all kinds of exotic birds. And uh, we just had an amazing time. And um, we went down there specifically uh, because they have a harpy eagle, which is one of the largest eagles in the world. And um, we went down to photograph for the Birds of Prey course that I'm creating. And, uh, and do some drawing and sketching. And it was really cool. Um, and so I thought today it might be kind of fun to pull one of the birds that we photographed uh, on the trip and do a painting of it. And there's a little hornbill right here that we, that Dustin photographed. I love this photo right here. This little hornbill. And I just, I love the light and the dark, the dark feathers on a dark background. And so I just thought this might be kind of fun to kind of create digitally and we can talk about lighting and, and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to do that today. And uh, it's going to be fun. Fun, fun, fun. going to be Daddy fun. Takes the T-bird away. <clears throat> and, uh, but anyway, uh, I want to, before we get to that, um, I want to remind you guys, a couple, a couple things I want to get to. Um, Tony Cipriano's uh, course on ZBrush is in pre-sales right now. And it's going like hotcakes. So I want you guys to get over there and get it. Um, Tony Cipriano is a great friend of mine. We've been friends for 30 years. He's an amazing sculptor. And a few years ago, he switched over to ZBrush, which for those of you that don't know, is a digital sculpting uh, software. It's digital sculpting software. And, uh, and he does some beautiful stuff with it. And, and he approaches it from a traditional sculpting uh, viewpoint. It's really cool, and so we got together with Tony about two months ago and uh, did a course on his approach to ZBrush, and uh, it's really cool. We just finished it up, and um, so it's in pre-sales right now. It goes on sale August 31st, the end of the month, um, and that's going to be full price. So if you get in there now and buy it in pre-sale, uh, you can get it for 50% off, which is 25 bucks, I think, something, something like that, $25 off. And uh, so that's pretty cool. So that's that's going. Uh, also, um, remember also, I mentioned to you guys um, last week or the week before I started talking about it. Um, we're doing a thing. If you are, uh, if you're an educator and you have a class, um, Nick and I want to make it easier for you guys uh, and give you group rates for your class. So we have the ability for a, a class to come in and uh, have access to the website at a group rate. And so um, go on over to creatureartteacher.com slash education and uh, you can learn more about that. And also, if you're a student as part of a class, tell your teacher. Let them know. And, uh, um, and come on over and check it out. It's a really great deal. And um, we want to be able to help you guys out. The COVID thing sucks. We know it. And uh, a lot of you are going to be stuck at home. Some of you may have even gone to school already and then got sent home or you're about to. I don't know. But uh, the point is, a lot of you are still at home. And, uh, and a lot of you have classes. And so we want to help you out. And so go to creatureartteacher.com slash education. And uh, we can help you out there. If you're a teacher or if you're a student, tell your teacher. That sort of thing. Uh, what else we got? Oh, um, uh, the scholarships. Uh, you still got till the end of the month. Um, Nick and I are giving away a five thousand dollars scholarship, art scholarship. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, Nick just wrote me a note. This is a message from my good friend Dave Clayton uh, over in the UK. Uh, he says you can draw a hot cake. I want to see if it sells itself. <laughs> it's gonna sell like hotcakes. Hot <laughs> um, uh, but Nick and I are go are doing a five thousand dollars scholarship, art scholarship every month. Uh, we're just starting out. Uh, August is our first month, 
and we're taking submissions uh, for that. You have to put forward your portfolio, fill out some paperwork. We want to be able to go through uh, a few things. And, uh, and that scholarship is good for college, but it's also good for online education if, you, if you'd rather do that. Uh, anything uh, 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 online, uh, if you want to take a, 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 just a regular course, you want to take a college course, uh, whatever you want to do, and uh, we, and if you uh, if you have uh, if you're short on funds, you don't know how you're going to do it. Well, maybe we can help you. And so, like I said, to one lucky student every month, we're going to be giving away a five thousand dollars scholarship. Go to creatureartteacher.com/scholarship, and you can find out more there. And remember, if you make it, if you get your submission in, and you don't get picked for that month. You don't have to submit again. You don't have to submit every month. Once we have your submission, it's in the pile and we will see it, okay? So don't worry about it. Once you get it in, it's in. And also, don't rush it. If you don't make it in this month, don't worry about it. You can get in next month. We're doing this every single month until the money runs out, okay? So we're good there. What am I missing, Dustin? Oh, Dustin's here. <laughs> Hi. How's it going? Uh, um, am I missing anything? Oh, uh, the Calipeg course. My brother Travis Blaze uh, has put together a course on how to use Calipeg. What's Calipeg, you ask? Well, Calipeg is an awesome piece of software uh, that's been put together for uh, 2D animation on your iPad. So if you have an iPad and you also want to do animation, use Calipeg. It's really awesome. It's a beautiful piece of software. It's very cheap. And uh, uh, you can do a lot with it. And so my brother Travis helped the folks over that created Pal Calipeg. He helped them out as their kind of beta tester. Travis is an amazing animator. He animated Coda and uh, uh, the Huns and Mulan and all kinds of Frollo and, and the Hunchback of Notre Dame. No Notre Dame. Notre, no Notre, Notre Dame. Dame. Uh, Notre Dame. And uh, uh, so anyway, he's done some really wonderful stuff. And so he's uh, doing some great. Uh, uh, stuff in Calipeg on an iPad. So if you're interested in that, check it out over at CreatureArtTeacher.com. On top of all of that, we've got some great stuff coming up. We've got my course on Birds of Prey, which Dustin and I are trying to finish up in the coming weeks. Um, I'm currently reviewing a course from our good friend Ronnie Williford, uh, who's done a course on color and uh, all kinds of great stuff he's done for us. Um, what was it? Oh, Painting Outdoors. I think he did one uh, he did a great one on color. That one was amazing. Uh, well, he's done a new one on uh, a beginner's introduction to drawing. And it's a big course. It's like nine hours. And if you know Ronnie, you know Ronnie is thorough. He goes through everything. And he does it in a really uh, understandable way that I think is really great for young viewers. Uh, or, any, or, or I don't care if you're 80, 8 or 80. I don't care. Uh, this is a really good course as I review it. Um, I'm really, uh, I really love how Ronnie approaches it and makes it very understandable and really makes the viewer feel like anybody can draw, which is what we always say. You just have to get in there and do it. There's no such thing as talent. Talent is the, uh, is the end result of just hard work. Um, so I'm a big believer in that. Um, <laughs> what? Tony Soprano does ZBrush? <laughs> that was a YouTube comment. No, Tony Cipriano, who's, <laughs> which in my mind is even more Italian. <laughs> so let's get let's uh, let's uh, support Tony Cipriano. Get his course. You're gonna love it. Uh, and, if, and actually, I've been wanting to do ZBrush for quite a while, and so I'm really happy we made this course because I'll be reviewing it as well. I sat in on the creation of it, and uh, but I need another review. I think we're good. I think I hit everything. You got everything? Yeah. That only took uh, 10 minutes. You're but uh, anyway, um, I, want, I, I left this guy. I wanted to show you this. Um, I, I made this little elf the other day. And uh, I, was, I, I was developing um, probably about 10, 10, 11, 12 years ago, 13 years ago. I was developing a movie at Disney called King of the Elves. And I wanted the elves to be something really unique, something we've never really seen and I and I we call them hidden creatures because in the story they've been among us for thousands of years we've just never seen them 
And so in my mind, I thought, okay, well, how do they, how is it that we've never seen them? So maybe they blend in. Uh, they have camouflage abilities like certain animals or insects. And so I started looking at different insects and was really inspired by them how katydids can grow, you know, the parts of their body to look like leaves and geckos can do the same thing and the markings on their bodies and all that kind of stuff. And I started kind of applying that idea to elves. And so I came up with this character. Um, this is kind of a variance on what I was doing at Disney. This is kind of a new idea. But uh, this is one I did the other day and really just, it was a Sunday afternoon and, and I just wanted to have some fun. And so I sat down and, and did this guy. And I just wanted to share it with you because I thought you might like it. Um, yeah, it's kind of fun. Little guy. And also, if you look at it up close, see that eye? That's my stepdaughter's eye. I just oh. took, took the photograph and put it in there. See that? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Yeah. Let's blow it up even more. There you go. That's a photograph. I just put that in right over the drawing. The rest is all drawing. But that is photo. So you, you, can, you can cheat all you want. There you go. Nice. So there he is. Nice little little dude. Call these guys limb runners because uh, uh, they run through the trees they, like squirrels. They kind of run through the trees and when the, uh, someone sees them they just kind of stop and flare their leaves and they look like they're part of the tree. So it's kind of cool. Squirrel. Squirrel. And we got Nick down there in Sarasota, in Scary Soda. And uh, don't say that's a recovered one. We got Nick in Sarasota. He's going to be answering your questions and posting them for me as well. I am. Um, I bent over. To, ooh, yeah, there we go. I felt that one. <laughs> I bent over the other day uh, to uh, turn the hose off and I threw my back out. That's a 52 year old problem. Oh, it's a fat man 52 year old problem. And uh, yeah, so my back is killing me. So, there you go. Don't get old. Have you ever done a, um, a space, like, sci-fi-ish kind of landscape? Um, not really. I mean, I've, I guess I've done some, but nothing serious. Uh, that might be something fun to do. What I'd love to do, I, I love being taken out of my comfort zone. If you remember, we did the uh, robot one the other day. I thought that was cool. And uh, I, um, I'm trying to remember. And I love being taken out of my, uh, my uh, comfort zone. So, yes. Uh, maybe we'll do that at some point. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking. Uh, I'm trying to remember what species of hornbill this is. I can't remember. It's driving me nuts now. It wasn't Blythe's. I'm not. I'm not a good expert on hornbills. I should be, but I'm not. I love this guy, and he was super friendly. He wanted me to scratch his neck, and when I took my hand away, he bit my hand because he wanted to come back and scratch his neck some more. <laughs> he was super, super cool. But anyway, we went to this. Uh, Natural Encounters in Winter Park, Florida. If you uh, look it up, Google it. Natural Encounters Inc., Winter Park, Florida, and um, and they do bird shows and, and they supply Disney with birds and different places around the world and um, and they're, the, the birds. First of all, most of them are hand reared. They've been they were hatched there, and um, and they're super happy and super friendly and um, and the other thing that really struck me because I'm always kind of sensitive to this is just what is their home life like you know their, their enclosures and all that and they had the best enclosures remember the giant aviary yeah. that we went into where the uh, where the marabou storks were they had these great marabou storks that had just hatched they are just a, a I, oh, actually, no, they didn't just hatch. They were they were a year or two old, but they still have the fuzz on their heads. Wow, Dustin shoots with shadow. <laughs> <laughs> Truth. Truth. Truth be told. I just kind of shot them. I'm spitting in, all over my screen. I just shot them in the, in the moment, so... Well, so 
couple of them are, are backlit, a couple of them are front lit, and then some are partially lit like this one. So it was very different sources of lighting throughout <coughs> the day. Sir, is it important to do penmanship every day for a beginner? If yes, how much time? As much time as it takes. Yeah, I get that question all the time. How much time does it take? There is no set time. There is no set time. But, you do need to do it. When you say penmanship, I'm assuming you mean draftsmanship, I guess? I'm guessing so. Just drawing in general, I think. Yeah. And that, that, um, yeah, it just takes good old time. Oops. So he says uh, this could be a great horned bill, maybe? This is a horn. Oh, a great horn bill? No, it's not a great horn bill. It's a little guy. They're a little, and I can't remember what species. It's, it's driving me nuts, too, eh? Oh, I just shrunk the bill back down. I got it. Aaron, do you practice character design a hundred times a day in order to get better at it? <laughs> no. I don't. I'm already great at it. What are you talking about? <laughs> Can't even <laughs> deal. No, I'm kidding. No, I uh, I practice a lot. Uh, I don't practice a hundred times a day. No. But I do practice a lot. Eh? There we go. That feels better. That Erica angle. Erica and Detlef are here. Hey, Detlef. Who 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 else? Are, who? Erica. Oh, Erica. Erica. Detlef. I just bought De Erica one of says, Good morning. Paintings. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. And Detlef says, Hey, guys, do you think there will be some reference photo pack from that natural encounters place you went to? Loving yes, the for, yes, for everybody but Detlef. <laughs> Loving the harpy eagle and the horn, horn bill. Would like to make a painting of a harpy eagle, but finding reference is hard. It is hard. Yeah, um, we, will, we will definitely get you some reference, Detlef. I bought one of Detlef's paintings the other day. He did this beautiful painting of a uh, of a bird of paradise, and um, I couldn't resist it. It was a beautiful watercolor. So I harassed him and harassed him until he gave in and said, "All right, shut up. I'll sell you the painting." So it's going to go up on our salon wall in our dining area. You know, just the place where it's going to go. And why do you like to draw, uh, why do you like to digitally paint with a flat brush? I like to too, I'm just wondering. Um, I don't know, it just, it's not really a flat brush because I have it set to, for pressure sensitivity. So it goes as a point, you can see it, it draws as a point. Um, but if I turn that off, I can use it as a flat brush and that's one of the reasons I like that. But it, it acts more like a pencil. That's why I liked it. YouTube question. Harry, and I know you've worked on a lot of different animated movies at Disney. Was there a character you really wanted to animate that you didn't get to? Love your work. Yes. I really wanted to animate Marahute. The eagle from The Rescuers Down Under. Um, I really wanted to animate Marahute. And uh, Glenn Keane was in charge and it was being done in California and I just didn't have didn't have the ability and I and I don't think and he, he told me afterwards he said if I had known you wanted to animate her I would have had you on the crew and I this is a lesson for you I didn't want to bother Glenn because he's always you know he's always been a big idol of mine and I just didn't want to bother him and so I never let him know that I wanted to work on the character and so I didn't end up working on the character. And then I found out later I could have if I had just let him know. So there you go. But Marahute is a big, giant, the only eagle I think in Australia, the wedge tailed eagle. Douglas says in your uh, uh, in response says, Awesome, thanks. Painting is on its way. Oh. Already in the USD poke, according to the tracker. Yeah, well, 
And I, if it's coming through the U.S. mail, I might get it next year. <laughs> considering, I don't know if you guys have heard over there in Europe, the, the U.S. mail is going through a whole bunch of crap right now. It's actually not as bad in Florida. It's in other places. I was talking to my mailman, our mailman the other day. And I was asking him if he was experiencing problems here, and he said not really. Um, they've cut back on their overtime, he said, but that you know that's not a big deal. Right. But he said places in the bigger cities like New York and that sort of thing. That's where it's really kind of they're hitting. They're getting hit hard. Hello, quick question. Do you recommend buying a screen protector for the Wacom Cintiq 16 to avoid scratches? And how often do you change the tip of the of the pencils? I love you. Oh, thank you. I love your work. <laughs> I love you too. I love you too. <laughs> um, I change mine. See, I use a the the new the screen now on the uh, on the 32 is ever so slightly etched which means it has a little bit of tooth to it. And so I find I can use the plastic nibs and, uh, and it feels fine. Because of that, they don't wear down. I, and I use mine, how long have I had this, this Cintiq? A year? About a year, At year least. and a half. I haven't changed the nib in my, in the, in my, in my, in my, in my, my stylus. I haven't changed it in a year since I got it. So that's kind of cool. Uh, and as regarding your screen protector, I don't, I've never bought a screen protector for any of mine. So, but I, you know, I, I take care of it and make sure that it doesn't get scratched. And so if you're, if you're real brutal with your Cintiqs, then yeah, you might want to, you might want to get one. How do you decide which courses to create? Dartboard. Yeah, dartboard. <laughs> you know, that's one of the things I love about my business now. It, you know, going, having gone from a corporate, you know, I was in the corporate world for 21 years at Disney. Matter of fact, I, I was, I was a vice president with my, or not, I was an executive, not vice president, I was director. And as a director, you're an executive at Disney, which is kind of funny, me being an executive. But um, I, um, I went from that to what I do now, which is, me just drawing and painting and teaching and one of the things I love about what I do compared to what I used to do is I can do whatever I want whatever I want as long as Nick agrees <laughs> that's all I have I just have to answer to Nick see even when you're you're uh, you have your own business and your own boss you still have someone to answer to and Nick and so Nick and I are partners now, so I have to answer to Nick. Talk on it. I, 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 see, that's where I screwed up. Well, I shouldn't have made Nick a partner. <laughs> should have never done it. I should have never done it. Ah, dang. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, but one of the great things about that is that I can do whatever I want, basically whenever I want to do it. And so, when I I just I literally go. Hey, let's do a Birds of Prey course. People have been asking for a Birds of Prey course. Let's do a Birds of Prey course. And then I'll go, hey, let's do a course on lighting. I feel like teaching people how to do lighting. And then I'll go, hey, you know what? I feel like doing some watercolor for a while. Let's do a course on watercolor. And that's literally how we come up with the ideas for our courses. It's just whatever I feel like at the time. I love that. I love it. Love it. Love that. I love that. I thought last week was our final Tuesday live. That we didn't. Be we no didn't. More Tuesday lives after that. We didn't do one last Tuesday. We did not. Where, where were we? Oh, I, last Tuesday, I, uh, I was doing a live stream. Last Tuesday, I was doing a live stream with Moscow. That's why I couldn't do it. Uh, there's an animation forum, and they asked me to talk about bears and locomotion of bears. And so I sat down. Actually, let's see if I have it. I don't, oh, you know what? I don't think I saved it. No, I didn't save it. I didn't save it. Actually, I, do, I might have it. Oh, look at him. Isn't he beautiful? 
Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Where would, where did it go? Bear walk demo. Look at that. There it is. This. This is. I sat down and and uh, I did a uh, a demo. I know it looks kind of scribbly, but I was talking about locomotion, and so I had an hour and a half with them, and so we did this over the uh, over the hour and a half, and uh, it was fun. It was a lot of fun, and uh, so there's bear locomotion. That's what I covered. Oh man, I just tweaked my back again. That's what I covered last Tuesday. And then the Tuesday before that, we were on vacation. So we haven't done a Tuesday live stream in two weeks. But today's the last one. I'm going to miss you guys. Not really, because I'll see you on Friday. YouTube question. I'm sort of new to your channel, so I don't know if you've answered this, but do you have your own character you draw and animate sometimes? Um, well, I've been working on a, um, an animated short for the last... 350 years <laughs> called Snow Bear so that's my own character I, and I did my own characters at Disney when I worked at Disney as a supervising animator I created Raja and I created Nala um, and I created Yao from Mulan and the Ancestors and I directed uh, um, and co-wrote uh, Brother Bear so we created those characters, kind of, not visually, but kind of create them from a writing standpoint. Do you have scratches on your tablet? I have a cheap make and a lot of scratches. No, I have no, it's one of the things I love about Wacom. They don't scratch. No, nope, no scratches. Go to the over the shoulder. I'm, I am. Oh. oh, okay, well, mm -hmm. just, just take it easy. I got it! <laughs> How you doing? How you doing? What's going on? Uh, I just tweaked my back again. So here is the setup, and yeah, it's pretty scratchless. And you can see how big I get to draw. That's one of the things I love about having the Cintiq. I can draw big, big John, big, big John. Are you doing uh, Lightbox Expo on online this year? Yes, we I are. I for it yesterday. Yep, you're going to be able to get some real... I'm going to be doing a few talks, and you're going to be able to get some really cool deals if you are part of the Expo. I, was, we're, we're, I can't... You know, I'm not lying if I say we're a bit disappointed that we can't go and do it in person. Yeah. I love that. I love that expo. And we really had a great time last year. I still haven't been yet. Well, you would have gone this year. But <laughs> you're not going now. <laughs> Dang it. Uh, besides Lightbox, will there be a uh, live online workshop in the future? Yes. Oh, yeah. We, we got quite a few things coming up. Yep. YouTube comment. Yeah, but if you hadn't partnered with Nick, you wouldn't have an excuse to sing that Nick Burt song each week. <laughs> Nick, 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 Burt. Okay, everybody, how's Snow Bear going? Yeah. Aaron, it has been 250 years. <laughs> well, you Me can see right now, am I working on Snow Bear? No. I'll take a more Titanic route. It has been... 84 years. Yeah. And you know who I blame? I blame you, the viewer. <laughs> I blame you, the customer. I have to keep creating. 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 I have to keep creating uh, uh, courses. <laughs> Do you prefer uh, Jurassic Park or Jurassic World? Uh, which one's World? Uh, World is the one, Whoops. the one with Chris Wrong Pratt. Way. Oh, Jurassic Park by far. Yeah. I like Chris Pratt okay. He's, don't get me wrong. The guy's dreamy. <clears throat> but. You can't beat the original. You can't beat the original. Dog, darn it. Trying on the wrong layer. It, it was funny is that I actually watched Jurassic Park last night. Really? 
Yep, I actually watched all three the past two days. Oh, because uh, they've been recommending them on Netflix? I just saw, yeah, the I saw them on Netflix, and I was just like, yeah, I haven't watched them in a while. I'm in a dinosaur mood. I'm going to watch these. <laughs> I'm in a dinosaur mood. <laughs> Especially yesterday when when I was work when I was working on the birds. Oh, yeah. Uh, when I was photo editing them. Photo editing? Photo, photo editing? Photo editing. Photo editing? Photo editing. Do you watch animated films with a critique eye, or can you turn your artist brain off and just enjoy the movie? I can't turn my artist brain off and enjoy the movie. Nope. And very often... Oh my gosh! I'm drawing... What'd you do? I'm drawing in the, I've been drawing this whole time. I've been drawing in the wrong blend mode. Dang it. Man, that annoys me. I'm just out of sorts today. We all are. There's a I closed on a new house the other day, and I, it's ever since then I've been just kind of out of sorts. My uh, my son-in-law and my daughter moved into a moved into a new house. I'm a landlord now. <laughs> I love it. And. Um, and so, yeah, so we've just been kind of <coughs> out of sights. We're going to say something else about the uh, critiquing of um, animated movies. Oh, yeah, critiquing of animated movies. I got sidetracked, didn't I? Yes, you did. <laughs> I, uh, I can't. I can't turn it off. I, um, I, I, the biggest thing that I critique, uh, first of all, is look, if, 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 if I get taken out of the movie because of the look of the movie in the first five minutes, I won't wa I won't finish it. And then the second part is story. I cannot help but break the story down as it's going, and and see what beats they're hitting when they're hitting them, all of that kind of stuff. This guy was so cool. Let me turn off my uh, my updates. Cause they're driving they're driving me nuts. They're driving me nutty. What inspired you to make the snow bear? Was it a specific event or story that influenced you? Um, at the time, I was living alone and I was lonely. I wanted to do. There's several things. I wanted to. Um, I wanted to do an animated short. Nick and I had been talking about it. I wanted to do something that we could do ourselves. So it had to be a single character, or at the most two characters. And um, and I wanted you know simple backgrounds. And so I just started with that in mind. I just started thinking. I remember I was in the shower one day, thinking this is where I get most of my ideas is either when I'm like barely awake, or in the shower. I get most of my story ideas. And so I was taking a shower and thinking, washing my hair, and I um and I was just thinking about, you know, being lonely and, you know, wah 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 and you know, all that kind of stuff. But um uh and I just thought about this polar bear, a single polar bear living in the Arctic all by himself. And so in order to and he was lonely. So in order to not feel lonely, he builds a snow bear, and they become friends, and that's where the idea came from. And I thought, hey, that could be kind of fun. And I, I pitched the idea to Nick. Nick really liked it, and we just started developing it from there, and that's how it became Snow Bear. Hello, Sarah Blaze. I'm an artist from Germany, and I'm 18 years old. And you're my inspiration, so I wanted to reach out because I've wanted to work at Disney and maybe have a chance. What do you think? Well, I think anybody's got a chance. You just gotta you gotta have a great portfolio. That's that's your thing. And if you don't have a great portfolio, then you're gonna have to do something else. Now remember, Disney's not the end all. Pixar's not the end all. There's so many other places that are great studios 
that you can work for out there. So, you know, putting your all your eggs in one basket for Disney, you know, that's you might be setting yourself up for disappointment because there are literally tens of thousands of people out there that want to be animators for Disney. And and quite frankly, not all, you know, only a small percentage are going to make it. And so setting up a kind of an alternate plan might be a, a good a good option for you as well. And I'm not saying you're not going to make it. I'm just saying, hey, maybe come up with an alternate. And uh, But at the same time, you know, go for it. It just takes, it's going to take a, an amazing portfolio. Uh, and, you know, depending on what it is that you're going to do, you just got to really be the best of the best, you know, at, at that. What did you think of the Batman trailer? You know what? I, Dustin and I were talking about this uh, yesterday. Um, it was fine. It, uh, to me, there was, you know, it didn't really say much. Oops. I didn't get much from it. You know, it's... Uh, yeah, the only real cool part was when he beat up that thug. Yeah, he beat the crap out of the thug. He lost his cool, which felt like Batman. Uh, it was dark, it was like the young Batman. you know, which is typical DC. But I really, I didn't get a sense of, I really didn't get a sense of the movie at all, from the trailer at all, nothing. So, um, you know, Patton, what's his first name, Pattinson? Robert Pattinson. Robert, Robert Bat Pattinson. I think he'll be a fine Batman. Um, but beyond that, I really didn't get much from the trailer. Hey, Aaron, have you ever dealt with an, with any RSI injuries like carpal tunnel or other wrist elbow stuff? No. Well, I mean, I broke my wrist snowboarding, but not from art. Can you see? Can you go to the to the mm -hmm. webcam? Can you go to the webcam? Can you see my the scar on my wrist? I don't know if you can see it right here. Yeah. Yeah, right here. You see that scar? Yep. So you can see I got this long scar here. I broke my wrist snowboarding, and I've got a big metal plate in there now. Um, but even then, when I had when I had the cast, I was and it was my left hand, and I'm left-handed. Uh, it was funny. Even when I had the cast, I I was still drawing, because I tend to draw from my shoulder. I don't I don't draw like this. And um, and so I've never had any kind of carpal tunnel issues. I know how people that have. How do you get your first job at a studio with no prior experience? Um, you have a great portfolio. That's how you do it. You got to have a good portfolio. Without the good portfolio, you don't get in. Because a lot of studios will, um, they'll take people like Disney, they'll take people with no prior experience if they have a great portfolio, and they'll teach them. Depends on if they have a training program. Um, and then there's other places that, you know, they, they want you to have some kind of experience because they don't want to take the time to train you. And that tends to be at, at uh, smaller studios. What kind of Photoshop membership do you recommend? It depends on what you want or what you need. If you're just using Photoshop, then just get their, their basic plan. I think it's, I don't know how much it is now because every time I, I say I'm wrong. But you can get one that's just Photoshop and Lightroom. I don't think you can get just Photoshop. Can you? But you can. But for some reason, uh, the light the Lightroom Photoshop uh, package is cheaper than the fo than the than just Photoshop. Than the fo yeah. Photoshop. Really? Yeah. That's so it's weird. Something, there's something weird about it. I don't know. What something it is. weird about that. But so weird. Aaron, do you think I would be a professional after learning your courses? Your courses really help. Um, I don't know if you'll be a professional, but you'll be on your way. Can't see what I did there. Mm -hmm. I'm on my way. What questions do you ah! have? 
Wrong layer again? No, I hurt my back, man. Uh, Tweak my back. <laughs> Do you have any suggestions for drawing feathers? Uh, yes. Don't I treat feathers like hair, in that in that um, you don't need to draw every feather and delineate every feather. Depend, you know, for me anyway, that's not the kind of thing I want to do. Uh, combine those layers. Um, I, I. Uh, Try to, I look at the patterns on the birds and the, the, the feather delineation you know comes secondary and that's what I focus on and in this case I probably will hit individual feathers because it's such a um, the, the ones that I pick will be the highlights I doing this right okay man my brain just turned off again. How do you choose your color palette? Well, for me, it's it's the it's the mood that I'm looking for. For this, I choose it because you know I've got reference in front of me, so that makes it easy. But I um I if I'm doing something out of my head, I choose it through the mood that I'm trying to convey. says that it's $9.99 plus tax. I think that's the Photoshop and Lightroom. Yes, I think that I think that's right. Erica, can you keep can you And that's per month. $9.99 plus tax is, is per month. Yeah, I think that's the Lightroom and Photoshop bundle? Or yeah. is that just Photoshop? Uh, I think that's Lightroom and Photoshop. No, it says uh, sometimes Adobe will have a great deal for a limited time uh, for the whole bundle, which would be like twenty nine, twenty nine a month. What? Gosh, because I'm paying like I think we pay sixty. Yeah, then we pay the, the full price. Yeah. Yes, it is Photoshop and Lightroom. Gotcha. Thank you, Erica. Yeah, ten ten bucks a month for Photoshop and Lightroom. Combo. Yeah, you can't beat that. No. Can't beat that with a stick. Since you're a fan of birds, do you like Roadrunner or other famous birds? Of course. Tweety Bird. Mimi. I mean, who doesn't? How can you not? I can't help it. Just getting here. Can we see the reference photo? No. You should have got here earlier. You're late. Never. <laughs> yeah, hold on. Hold on a minute. Here it is. <laughs> Look at that texture and that beat. Isn't that awesome? Such a beautiful bird. Hornbill. I'm a horn hornbill. Look at this fish eagle. Dustin got a photo of. They had a fish African fish eagle. Beautiful bird. Yeah, I really like that pose. Me as well. What was the most difficult part of learning to draw for you? Oh, everything. Everything about drawing is difficult. <laughs> you kidding me? It's an ongoing, lifelong pursuit. had you know when I when I first started I struggled with uh, humans maybe that's why I, I fell in love with drawing animals so much but when I first started I really did struggle with humans a lot I spent a lot of time doing figure drawing to get better at drawing humans and understanding real world human anatomy
Is Zazu a hornbill of some, of some kind? Yes. And I can't remember the species. It's driving me nuts because the species of hornbill that Zazu is, I saw a lot of them on my first trip to Africa when I, I went to uh, Samburu Park and they were everywhere. In Kenya. Can you or can't you? <laughs> uh, I'll be here all week. How do you make your drawings so detailed? I draw detail. <laughs> you, just, you just draw more on top of the drawing. But you notice, you notice how I don't spend a lot. I, I work, I work towards the detail. I don't start drawing detail right away. You work towards it. I gradually get there. Mm. Man. I, back, man. Still killing you? Oh. Mm. Have you worked for Bruce Smith before? I haven't worked for him, but we've worked together. We both worked at Disney at the same time. Bruce is one of the genius animators out there. Absolutely genius. incredible. If any of you guys ever saw, went to the animation tour, in Florida, if you ever went to the animation tour years ago, some of you are probably not old enough, but um, but if you ever went to that and you saw the the presentation by Robin Williams, and he gets turned into an animated character, Bruce Smith is the guy. He's the animator that's drawing him in the in the video with Walter Cronkite. Bruce Smith animated Facilier. Or Facil is it Facilier? Facilier. Dr. Facilier. Yeah. He's got friends on the other side, right? Yeah, he does, baby. He's got friends on the other side. Do you think uh, that 2D animation films will ever make a comeback in the U.S.? Yes. Since Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, I'm a bit more help uh, hopeful. Uh, here in Japan, it seems a bit more common. It does seem more common in Japan. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but I do think, yes, I do think it will, they will. I think it's going to be on streaming platforms, though. I don't know that they'll make big theatrical. I, I think movie theaters are dead now. We'll see how, how well they survive. Yeah. But I think, yeah, the way we're going to consume content is going to change from here on out. I know after COVID everything will go back to normal, but I do think movies and are going to take a big hit permanently. I think there's going to be a big part of the population that just doesn't want to hang around people. I think people are getting hooked on staying home and consuming their entertainment there. Um, these are all my theories. Um, I think obviously education is going to change forever. Um, it, and if it doesn't, I think it should. Um, yeah, I, I do think 2D will come back for sure. It's just going to be, I don't think it's going to be in the way that we consumed it before. I think it's going to be on streaming platforms and, and that sort of thing. They've got to find ways of making the films cheaper. They can't, they, you know, the way Pixar and Disney and everybody make their movies, I think is going to have to change. You know, when you spend $200 million to make a movie, you have to make $500 million in the box office in order for it to turn a profit. That's no, that's a terrible business model. And, and I don't know if they, I, I just don't know, and I mean, there's obviously people that know way better than I do. I just have in my in my gut that you know movie theaters and and, and whatnot. It's going to change. It's going to change the way we consume consume entertainment. I know Nick has an opinion on this. What do you think, Nick? Have you seen uh, Have you seen any Japanese animation movies like uh, the Ghibli ones? And if so, uh, what are the major differences you notice in them compared to Disney? Well, I've been to Studio Ghibli first of all. 
I love the way they make their movies. I've met Bucky. I've met Miyazaki. He and I sat, we had lunch and we talked and I asked him if he liked Brother Bear and he said no. <laughs> I liked how incredibly honest he was. Uh, is. Uh, he's a very cool guy. Um, one of the big things is, you know, the way they make their movies is it's basically Miyazaki, it's Miyazaki's movie and he makes it, you know, it's his, it's, it's his way or the highway. Which is interesting because you get a very unified vision that way. I don't know that they're all home runs, but you do have a, a very uh, singular vision which can be beneficial in making a film because you, you just make it, you know. Um, and I think that's very, it's exciting and, and very cool. Um, I'm going to dry brush some of this on now. Um, and then also, you know, the budgets are different. They, and the, their backgrounds are just so stunning. And I think, you know, we did nice backgrounds too. But um, at Disney. But there's something about those Ghibli backgrounds that are just amazing. And, um, and they don't do, you know, full ones and twos in their animation everywhere. They, they do a lot of threes and fours and sixes and eights and, you know, they don't do full animation a lot of the times. Well, the only, well, they, they, they do do ones, but they're... Yeah, sometimes. Just not all over the place. Not all over the place. Yeah. But, um, the, the one anime that is the most well known for animating in ones in fact I think it was one of the first is uh, Akira well, yeah Akira for for people like me yes <laughs> but um yeah when it comes to a movie like that yeah just the just the art style in general I just love the difference in that and Yeah. I, I feel that a lot of the animation here in the US is very watered down for for more viewers. Uh-huh. While while Japan, like yes, there are series that are beneficial a lot towards kids too. They have just as many anime series and films like like uh Akira or Ghost of the Shell that are more, more towards the, to the adults that uh, animations from other nations are a little more eh about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. Like they're they're willing to push the boundaries. Nick asks, uh, why did they color Zazu like Toucan Sam? Uh, I don't know, but Zazu, the, those colors are those colors really are on that species of, of uh, hornbill in Africa. Was that your red bill hornbill? Uh, was it red bill? It might be. Let me look. They have a. Uh, where is it? Let's look. It's just red looking. Red hornbill. Uh, hornbill species. Zazu is an eastern yellow bill hornbill. Mm. Or northern red bill. Could have been a northern red bill. The ones that I photographed were uh, Eastern yellow-billed hornbills. And I think that's what he was. I could be wrong. Piping. I think originally, because it was like a, he was like blue with red. And this was like his original coloring and everything. Zazu? Yeah. You see that from Yeah, there? but it's not the the hornbill it's from Kenya. Species. Trying to remember which one. 
than what I'm doing now is. I can't remember what species it is. It's driving me nuts, eh? Not silvery cheeked. Sulu. Not in here. Pied hornbill, that's what it was. He's a pied hornbill. Pied hornbill? Yeah, the one I'm doing now. Pretty sure, eh? Is that right? Is it a pie horn bill? It's got a different beak though. But it just might be this individual. Yeah. Hello. Oh, I gotta go back to Nick. Nick, 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 Nick. Nick, 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 Nick. Perch. Nick says, I don't think theaters will ever go away entirely. I agree with that. I don't think they will either. I just think they're going to take a hit. Um, but I do think they will need to change. You'll see more and more of the dinner restaurant style ones, I think. I agree with you there, too. Also, you'll see less megaplex megaplexes and more five and six screen theaters, I think. Yes, I agree with you there as well. It's amazing how much we agree on. It's amazing how much in agreement we are. What? All right, so I'm basically just getting local color in right now. And so now, now, I'm going to do shadows. Oh, man. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh. Right, my lower back. When I was a kid, I um, when I was a kid. I fell out of a tree and broke my back, and it, it didn't heal properly. And I just got my two lower vertebrae um, are just a kind of a pile of rocks. It looks like, and they're all fused together. And uh, so I've had back issues for a long time, uh, but now if I get any kind of strain down there. Holy moly, does it hurt. And they told me, when, I, when we discovered that I broke my back, I was in my 30s. I did it when I was 15, and I didn't tell my parents, because we didn't have insurance, and I didn't, and I was just afraid to tell them that I got hurt. I didn't realize I broke my back. Um, oh, dark on it. It's supposed to be a clipping mask. There we go. And so it just healed on its own, which is really strange because you would think a broken back, uh, you would know it. And I, I could feel it crinkling and cre creaking down there, but I, um, I, uh, I just kind of suffered through it. It was kind of weird. And I, um, I didn't tell anyone. And after about eight weeks or so, I didn't move a lot. I spent a lot of time on the couch. And after about eight weeks, it just stopped hurting. And I, and uh, I, when I was 30, I, I tore a disc in my back, and I went in to have it x-rayed. And that's when they discovered that the vertebrae in my lower back had all been crushed and then all fused together. And, uh, and they said, yeah, you know, that's happened. You know, it happens to people sometimes. They break their back and don't realize it. I thought that was kind of crazy. They said, but when you get into your 40s, you're going to start hurting. And sure enough, when I hit my mid-40s, it started giving me problems. And now my right leg is always numb. Uh, anyway, I'm rambling. Oh, I lost the question. Sorry, Nick. I was rambling <laughs> about, about myself. As always. As always. Have you ever tried to work with 3D software? If so, how did you like it? Hated it. I tried to I tried to learn Maya, and um, I just I was trying to direct a movie at the same time, and so it didn't work out. Um, but I really I did not enjoy Maya at all. And that's the only thing I've ever tried to learn. I've never tried any other software. I want to. I'd like to try to use uh, ZBrush. Did Photoshop fix its bug? 
Yeah, I haven't I haven't had the issue. So I'm yeah, actually it's funny you say that. I, I, I haven't had that issue in a long time. I don't know if you can see the darkness on here because it's such a small value change. Matter of fact, I'm going to go a little darker. You can go darker, darker with it. You know, darker. It is quite dark. It is quite dark. <laughs> what do you think of all the remake movies like Lion King, for example? Awesome movies, but are they running out of ideas for new films? Is it a money thing? <laughs> it's I want to see new animated movies. No, it's definitely a money thing. Yeah. Trust me, hey, when you've got a movie that's made a billion dollars over the years and it's and uh, two generations have already gone by, um, and you know if you remake it in a new style, it's almost a home guaranteed home run, you'll probably make that movie then take a chance on another big budget film and so that's that's basically the thinking behind doing the remakes they're taking their best hey put it this way I'll guarantee you in 25 years you're gonna see a frozen live action <laughs> I'll guarantee you because it's a sure it's a sure thing and you know what if you're in their position you do the same thing CG is close enough to, to live action, so might as well just leave stuff like that alone. But it's just... It's lazy in my opinion. Yeah, but it, it, that's even better. Less work to make more money. It's a business. You know, at the end of the day, Disney, for all, all the stuff people like to imagine it, it is Disney's a business they're out to make money they're out to make their their sh their shareholders the board money that's that's what it's all about and they're doing it through wholesome entertainment but it's still money twitch question I have a bad back too at 27 I have trouble sitting for long periods of time drawing what do you do to help your back? I could use some advice on this. It's been making me depressed to do art. <laughs> I'll get in the shower and let the hot, hot water uh, um, hit my back, and that seems to help it. I'll lay on a pillow sometimes when I go to bed. Um, if you have access to a pool, getting in a pool really helps. And swimming, swimming because it takes the weight off your back and allows you to uh, kind of exercise without straining your back. Um, that really helps a lot, and then mild exercise helps. You know, when I am ex when I am exercising regularly, which I'm not, I haven't been lately except for walking. Um, but when I'm doing strength strength training, um, my back always gets better, especially when I'm doing back exercises. It really helps my back. So any kind of mild strength training that you can do will help it. And if you're doing, if you start getting into heavy strength training, then make sure you wear a, a weight belt. Support that lower back. Nick, oh, yeah, Nick, and this is a really piece, a good piece of uh, advice that Nick says, because um, he, he's been doing this for a while. He recommends a standing desk so you can switch between sitting and standing throughout the day. And that does help. I've got this numbing numbing problem with my leg, and so any kind of standing at all really hurts it. Like when I do dishes, by the time I'm done doing dishes, my leg is on fire and pins and needles and completely, it's numb but on fire at the same time. It's a weird feeling down my right leg. YouTube uh, comment. Please make a course on drawing different birds. I love to draw birds, but I struggle with the anatomy. And I've purchased all of your animal courses, and I really improved. That's great. And we plan on doing more on birds. Matter of fact, um, I really like the collection of birds that Nature Natural Encounters has. 
And so I might just gear a course around what they have. They had, I think, 400 some odd uh, macaws, different species of macaws. And I thought, ooh, parrots and macaws would be kind of fun to do. You know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? Have you ever done any work in gaming? Um, you know, not really. I, back in the day, way back in the day, Disney did, uh, for the Sega games, for Aladdin and, uh, for Aladdin and Lion King, the, the Sega video games, we animated the, the, the uh, character animation at our studio, and I, and I did some of the animation for that, like Simba swinging through the trees and stuff like that, which is weird. Try, try animating a cat grabbing vines and swinging through the trees. It's bizarre. But, um, but we did that. But that's really the only time I've ever worked on a video game, I think. Nick knows more than I do. I always say, no, I didn't do this. No, I didn't do that. And he goes, well, actually, remember you did this. And I went, oh, yeah, I forgot. What do you think about Lilo and Stitch? The animators going back to watercolors for animation? Loved it. I watched them paint it. They made Lilo and Stitch at the same studio I was working at at the time. So when we were making Brother Bear, the other crew was making Lilo and Stitch. And uh, several of my really good friends were uh, painters on that. So it was fun to go over and see what they were doing. I love those backgrounds. Paul Felix, kind of, uh, was a development artist at Disney, kind of nailed the style for the film. He's a brilliant genius of an artist. Aaron, do you know what type of art uh, I need in a portfolio to work for an animated animation studio? Well, it depends on what you want to uh, what you want to do in the studio. And that's what you have to gear your portfolio towards. If you want to be an animator, then you have to have animation. If you want to be a character designer, you have to have character design. If you want to be a prop designer, you got to have props. So you can see where I'm going with this. It depends on what you want to what you want to do, what you really want to do. Have you ever tried a scratch art? I have. I have several scratch boards uh, in my in my possession somewhere. Who can? Alright, so I'm gonna throw the background in now. Now that I got the the front part in. I think this is what she meant by scratch scratch art. Where it's like all where it's like a scratchable surface. Yeah. I've done, yeah, you've done those. Yeah, I know what scratch art is. Don't you try to, don't try to school me on art. Don't you dare try to school me on art. <laughs> Dustin. <laughs> Dustin looked like he was hurt. I was just kidding, son. Uh, do your bird courses feature any emus or uh, caso? Casuaries? Casuaries. No, not now. The, the only bird course I have right now, or the one I'm working on, is, is Birds of Prey. So this is going to be a dark background. I can never get it all in. This is a large, uh, this is a large canvas size, and it's um, pretty detailed. It's 300 DPI, 18 by 24 inches at 300 DPI, so it's kind of large. So it, if I'm using a big brush, it tends to lag a little bit. Even with my computer set the way it is, it still lags just a touch. Hmm, just got here. Where can we ask the questions? <laughs> <laughs> I just thought, uh, well, just to, you know, 
You you just asked a question. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Where did I ask the question? I didn't even get that. That was pretty funny. <laughs> I wonder what Stitch would look like in a realistic rendition. Can we draw that sometime? Oh, that's funny. That'd be a cool idea. I could do that. That'd be kind of fun. Might have asked this before, but have you heard of Has Been Hotel by uh, Busy Pop? No. Oh yeah, no, is that the yeah, one you showed me? This one? Yeah. No, uh, I, I don't think I showed you, but it's the one that we always that we talked about for yeah for quite some time. Yeah, no, I thought you showed me parts of it. I think I did. Yeah, you did. <laughs> you have a course on Dungeons and Dragons? No. <laughs> Nor will I ever. <laughs> Be like cooler if you need. <laughs> Nick says that he has a board for standing at his desk that lets him shift his weight. And there it goes. <laughs> he just he just deleted it. Uh, and it helps. That that keeps it keeps his muscles in his back going. He and I have talked about this quite a bit. How does that work? Is it like shifting the weight? Is it just like the it just goes up and down? That's it. Or? Yeah, it's like a little board, like a endo board kind of. Huh. And it just allows you to shift back and forth. Interesting. Interesting. Hi, from Clearwater, Florida. What about maybe a seabird course, too? Absolutely. We plan on doing that. Uh, as there's lots of nice and different types of birds that hang around the ocean, too. Love your work. Yeah, actually, I, w I was on a kick back in the 90s of painting gulls all the time. I painted a lot of gulls. If Aaron could ask the viewers a question, what would it be? Uh, what? I don't know. That's a uh, that's interesting. That's a that's a good question. I'm always curious about. Um, what what drew you to art? Why is it why is it that you want to be an artist? Are there any specific conditions when you look um, that you're looking for when you're choosing uh, your drawing subject, like composition, colors, etc.? Yeah, it's all of that. Yes. The short answer is yes. Meaning, yes to it all. Nick says, uh, we need to uh, have Travis on a future stream to demo Calipeg so that maybe he can do a realistic stitch. That's a cool idea. My brother Travis was one of the animators of Stitch. In Lilo and Stitch. It was supervised by my friend Alex Cooperschmidt. Alex created him for the screen. But then my brother Travis was also one of the animators. Do you sell personal drawings like uh, a drawing of the beast done by you? Uh, yeah. Do I still have them? Is that what the question was? Oh, like, uh, do, you, do you sell our Oh, do I that? sell? No, I don't sell Disney character drawings. No. Nope. <laughs> if Dustin asked us a question, what would that be? There you go. I, I'm on the same boat. I don't know. <laughs> well, that's boring. Mine would probably be... Gotta be something, what? man. 
if you're inspired to be an artist or an animator by a movie, what movie was it? Oh, that's interesting. That's a good. That's a good question, eh? It's a good question, here, but. So here I'm trying to get a little bit of iridescence and light in the feathers. Trying to get a little bit of uh, uh, and a little bit of uh, uh. It's getting hot in here. It's always hot in here. Any advice on getting out of an art block? Oh, you wondered if that board would prevent my tingly issue. Oh, I don't, actually, I, I don't know. I don't know if that'll prevent my tingly issue or not. What did you say, Dustin? I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> I was reading at the same time you were talking. I apologize. Lower See what I go through? Lower I apologize for that. See what I go through? <laughs> hey, Achilles is here. Any advice on getting out of an uh, art block? Yes, just draw. It's almost like freeform drawing. Just, just draw. Just get your hand to start moving, and eventually you'll break out of it. Is there a reason you don't sell drawings? For Disney? From Disney? Disney characters? Yeah, because they're not my characters. They're not... Yeah, you do sell drawings. I just sell not drawings, Disney yeah. Drawings. I just don't sell Disney drawings. That'd be plagiarizing. I don't plagiarize. What year did you start digitally painting? Uh, 2005. Yeah. See, here's a here's a a great example. This is a great example of um, how the relative values around certain values can make colors look bright or dim. When I'm painting right here, you can see how bright the color looks that I'm you know against this black. It's not super bright, obviously. But it looks it looks fairly bright, you know. But when you see it on my color wheel, look how dark it is in the uh, in there. And that's just an example. And I, I, this is something I talk about in my uh, painting light course. That you know, a lot of times it's it's the values and the light around the value that you're creating that will determine your brightness or darkness and, and whatnot. That's a good question. What's that? If you had to give up on paper and pencil or digital art, which would you give up? Digital. Digital? Yeah. Hands down. Because with one thing that you can never take away from paper, canvas, traditional, is that you have something physical at the end. And I like that. I love painting digitally, but I don't like the fact that I don't, you know, I have to I have to print it out in order to have something. This is a little bit more green now. And plus during a <laughs> during a thunderstorm. Yeah, it won't, it won't I won't lose it. <laughs> it won't lose it. <laughs> like that one time. Yeah. Any advice for a 2D animation student starting final film? Yes. 
absolutely don't make a whole movie that's the first mistake young artists make they try they want to impress everybody and they end up trying to make this epic make it simple simple and focus on quality if it's simple and really focused on so that my friend is my advice to you Aaron have you watched the castle of uh, Cagliostro it was Miyazaki's first movie he directed it was um and it in fact is a uh I remember it as a Lupin the Third movie. I don't know that movie. No. You you ever heard of Lupin the Third? No. Uh, Lupin the Third was a very popular um, anime and anime character back in the back in the good old mid, days. Yeah, you know, like mid to late seventies, I would say. Uh huh. And in in fact, it was. Lupin the Third mixed with uh, a real, <laughs> real life person that, in which the two became inspirations for Spike Spiegel, my favorite anime ever, Cowboy Bebop. Oh, right on. I didn't know that. In fact, a show. YouTube question: Do you happen to know if there's a non-toxic way to fix a charcoal drawing on canvas? A non-toxic way to fix a charcoal drawing. Eraser. I mean, that's all I know. You can erase it. You can... Uh, I'm not sure what else to tell you. Or start over. I, I'm not quite sure. I don't know if it's a damaged drawing that's already existing or if it's one you're trying to do and you and you don't know how to... I'm, I'm not sure I understand. I, I don't know if I have all the information <laughs> for, the, for the question. But I use I use kneaded erasers, gum erasers. Oh, fix like fix it. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Sorry, Dick. Here's the to fix. Uh, no, I don't know of any non-toxic uh, fixatives. Let's look on the third in the middle. Oh, gotcha. Okay, that's cool. I've seen that before. Have you? Know. It spray it, if if you're going to spray the fixative, spray it outside, though. Don't spray it in the house. Go ahead, Dustin. Sorry. No worries. Yeah, they, um, they recently did a CG animated film for Lupin the Third. I think it was uh, earlier this year. It was either earlier this year or last year. <coughs> but. Oh, my gosh. Ow. Man, I thought my back was doing better. I did really good yesterday. Uh, do you use Photoshop or Procreate or another program? Both. I'm using Photoshop now. When I'm on an iPad, I use Procreate. My son wants to attend Ringling College. Do you have any good advice for him, please? Um... Well, you're going to spend a lot of money. I'll tell you that. Better be something you really want to do. Yeah, make sure it's, it's really what you want, really want to do. Because those forty-five or 50000 or whatever the heck it is a year now, is, it's, uh, it's going to be expensive. So work hard. I don't necessarily agree anymore with spending that kind of money for school. I don't... I think it's this kind of criminal that schools charge that much anymore but they're they're out for profit so there you go so I get you know I understand it's a business but when you're when students graduate college and they've got basically a home mortgage that they have to pay off before they've before they've even started their lives I think there's something wrong with that that's why I think colleges should at least be subsidized. And I understand private colleges, you know, they're going to charge what they want to charge. 
but at least universities should be, and I know universities are a lot cheaper, but I think there should be some better pricing. But, uh, but going back to your original question, if, uh, I don't really have much advice for them other than just work hard. You know, pick the, pick the, uh, the direction you want to go and really listen to your instructors. instructors. Uh, one of the things I, I didn't do when I was in college, and I'm glad I didn't, because all the ones that, that did really haven't done anything with their career. I didn't party when I was in college. And a lot of people will, and, and, they, and they're successful, and that's great. But I know Nick didn't party. Uh, Nick was busy bartending to make ends meet, or he was studying and working. And that's pretty much what I was doing. I was doing freelance work anytime I could to pay my rent because I had to pay my way through college. Um, or I was doing my assignments. And, um, you know, I did take off to the beach every once in a while, but I really didn't get out there and, you know, party and, and booze it up and stuff. Not until I was, not until I already established my career did I start doing that. <laughs> So my, my recommendation there is just take your, you know, this is really, when you're going to art school or any kind of college, it's really defining your career path. And, uh, and I think the more serious you take it, the better off you're going to be. I know I sound like an old man when I say that, but I, I really believe it's true. It's what helped me get, you know, get into the door at Disney. Because I really took my, my training seriously in it allowed me to create a portfolio that that helped me get to where I got. Uh, can you make a course on soft pastels? Really enjoyed your charcoal course and I want to learn how to blend soft pastels. Thank you. Do you know I have never done a pastel painting? Ever? Mm -hmm. I've never done a pastel painting. Interesting. And uh, so, with that being said, uh, I don't know how to do pastels. I could probably sit down and learn, but I still don't think I would be uh, expert enough to actually teach it. I'm going to have to find an artist friend of mine that knows pastels. I don't know that I know anyone that, that does pastels. That's kind of, I, I haven't really thought about that. I think that's crazy, man. Dustin, is it true your Studio Ghibli is making a 3D movie at the moment? Uh, yes, they are. Uh, I've seen some screenshots of it, and the movie is called Aya and the Witch, and it's a it is Studio Ghibli's first CG animated feature. And when you look at the screenshots, it it it's definitely the Studio Ghibli style of like all the character designs and everything, but just in a CG form. Yeah, it's going off. And it's cool and yet weird at the same time. <laughs> but hopefully it'll... Trying to be. change my... Uh, What about um, uh, Studio trouble. Paint for digital painting? What's that? Have you ever tried a Studio Paint for digital? What work? is going on with this? Why is this not changing? That's weird. Everything alright? Oh, uh, my brush. My brush is weird. Okay, now I got it. Brightness, contrast, depth. There we go. Now it's adjusting. It was weird. I had to like switch out of it. I'm sorry. Ask the question again, Dustin. I was my brain was on my brush. Oh no worries. This person repeated it like three three times already. <laughs> <laughs> but what about um clip clip studio paint for digital art? What about it? Uh, I've never used it. Never used it. <laughs> Sorry, Dustin. All that for that. <laughs> no, for him, for for him asking it three three times in a row. Yeah, 
Yeah, thanks, dude. Thanks for being so persistent. So you can see when I'm, with the dry brushing, I can create this kind of rough texture on the beak. Can I purchase a hard copy of your art courses? Uh, no. I'm not technologically savvy and wouldn't know how to retrieve it. Sorry, I don't have hard copies. Be a lot cooler if you did. Be a lot cooler if you were technologically savvy. You don't have to be that technologically savvy to to do it. It's just downloading. That's all you have to do. Just download. You too. Oh man, I just moved the wrong way. <laughs> uh oh. YouTube question, can you make a course, oh, I just read that one. Uh, what do you think the most underrated art utensil, the eraser? I think the eraser is the most underrated. There's so much you can do with an eraser. As far as drawing goes. I'm not, I'm not going to be able to get out of my chair. You're going to have to help me get out of my chair. We're almost there. I th this is coming along, huh? I dig this guy. Hey, I dig you, little guy. I dig this little guy. Why did you leave Disney? Is there a chance uh, you come back to direct or animate something? Probably not. I left Disney. Um, I was taken off the movie that I was directing. Um, my wife had passed away from uh, Dustin's mom uh, had passed away from cancer, breast cancer, two years earlier, and I was pretty devastated. And I kind of lost my. I just lost my drive, and um, and I. I was directing a movie, but my heart just wasn't in it anymore. And eventually they took me off the film. And, uh, and when they did, I realized that I needed to make a change. I'd been there for 21 years, but my heart just wasn't in it the way that it was, you know, before. And so I decided to quit and make a change in my life. And that's why I left Disney. Started over completely. And, uh, yeah, so there you have it. There's, that's why I left. So he's asking, are we at the one more thing point? Not yet. Have you saved? You know what? I don't think I have. Do you have a favorite character you've worked on? Yes, the beast. There's that eye, nice and glossy. Let me save this. What kind of bird is this? A silvery cheeked hornbill? It's not a silvery cheek. No, silvery cheeked are bigger than this guy. I think this is a pied, pied horn build. Pied build? I can't remember. It's driving me nuts, eh? Amy Fennell, if you're. Whoops, I just. Spit. Pied horn build? Pied horn build, yeah. I think it's that. Amy Fennell, if you're watching, can you remind me what, what horn build this is? Amy was the the trainer that took us around. She was awesome.
do, baby, baby, it's a wild a lot of um, oriental pie bill, or pie, pie horn bill. That's what it's called? I, I don't think so. Because this is, you know, this is the kind of images that we see for, for pipe. Yeah, that's not, that's not it. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. Oops. Oops. What do you think? Oh, I'm just I'm repeating the same questions. Weight on his chest. Forgot about that. Might be a black one. No, it wasn't that. Let me look again. African. African pine. I don't think that's right. I just don't think that's right. African. No. No. Go back. Hornbill species. Um, There's 55 species of hornbill. When did the scene change? Huh? That's weird. Um, nothing. It's just. So now what I want to do is I'm going to put all these together. Together. And we're going to merge those layers. And then I'm going to go in with my blend, with my smudge tool. I'm going to soften some of these edges. Especially down in here. love kind of blurring out these edges just losing edges it, if you don't overdo it it really gets the painting to unify the key is to not overdo it I don't know if you're seeing the value changes in here because it's so close I'm hoping that uh, you can see the value changes at home or you're watching. Uh, do you ever go to live model drawing classes? Uh, yes, I haven't in a long time, but yes, whenever I have an opportunity, I do. You know, I haven't done, since I was at Disney, I haven't done any uh, live nudes we did that all through college, and uh, and a lot at Disney, and um, that is very good for understanding figure. People get weirded out by it because you're drawing someone nude in front of you, but you get over that really fast. I like doing like a dark subject like this over a dark background. This is kind of, it's cool. Oh, oh man, there we go. Now I'm gonna put a layer on top. We're gonna set that to multiply. And I'm going to 
grab that color basically and we're going to go to my gradient and I'm just going to darken the bottom a bit. Do you find digital faster to accomplish than pencil and paper? Yes, absolutely. Yep, that's one of the things I love about working digitally is how quickly I can get through it. Uh, do you create your own brushes? Yes. Uh, if so, uh, did you ever try to illustrate using the pre-built brushes in Photoshop or Procreate? Yes, I, I used to use them all the time and I would find that I needed a special brush to do a certain thing and so I started learning how to make my own brushes. And actually I have a whole bunch of those for sale on my website and they're only a dollar for a whole pack at CreatureArtTeacher.com. I've got hundreds and hundreds of brushes that I've created. Have you ever done a live stream barn owl? Uh, I don't oh. know if I've done one live stream or not. I think I thought you did. What, we uh, did. We did the barn owl. We drew one for the course, but I don't think I live streamed it. I'm gonna blow this I up. You'd... Oh, you know what I did this whole time? That's skin right there. I didn't realize that was skin. See, this this is where it pays to understand your uh, your subject. No, but I thought. Um, what was it, late, sometime late last year? Sometime in the past. Yeah, sometime in the past. Yeah, cause it did a barn owl that was, that looked like it was, looked like it was nighttime. Oh yeah, I think I did. I remember which one you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. I did. Yeah, so, you did do a live stream one. Yeah. Do you ever get massages for your back? It might help, especially the hot stones. <laughs> oh no, this one is this is a soft tissue injury that I did, that I did to my back. This one just it just has to heal. Someone says it's it's a kind of looks like a trumpeter form bill. Uh, I don't I don't remember her saying it was a trumpeter. It's relatively close. Let me see. Uh, Where is it? No, the one, uh, go back. What's the one next to it? That one. Is that a trumpeter as well? What is that one? It, yeah, trumpeter horn bill. Oh, maybe it was. Maybe it is a trumpeter then. It is. It does look similar to that, doesn't it? Yeah, here's this one. Uh, yeah, that beak looks really close. Let me look it up. I should know better. Because the one that yeah. is in the photo is a young one, right? Yeah. I think that's right. I think this is a trumpeter. Because yeah, not till they're, if I'm guessing, it's not till they're older when they get the the red uh, pigmented skin like around their eye. Yeah. Yep, it's a trumpeter. Good call, person. Jim Chochets. Mm. There we go. There we go. Uh, 
go. There we go. There we go. Why do you paint? What's that? Why do you paint? Because I can't not paint. <laughs> That's why I paint. Are we at the one more thing? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Do you want us to be Dustin? Did you stay up late last night? I'm I'm just reading the questions. Oh, but you didn't answer my question. I'm answering a question by reading the question. <laughs> Did you stay up late last night? I was up to around one thirty. That's not bad. That's not bad, man. That's not, that's not bad. Well, oh, I gotta go back to Nick. Nick, one. Nick, 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 Nick. There we go. I may have went to sleep at one thirty, but I kept on waking up. Oh, did 20. you? Yeah. How well did your traditional art skills transfer to digital, or did you essentially have to relearn a lot on digital? The thing about digital, all I had to learn was the software, and, and especially using a Wacom Cintiq, it made it very easy to make the transition because it's it was a direct, you know, I, I, it, it was a direct transfer. I'm just I'm drawing on the screen instead of on paper. And so that part was easy. Um, uh, it was really, yeah, it was really just about understanding the software. So um, I, I, I absolutely had no problem uh, sw switching over. And then the other thing is um, uh, I think I had an advantage by having done so much digital work in the past. I'm not traditional work in the past that my background was that it really helped me a lot um, when it came time when in my approach um, my approach was purely based on having worked uh, traditionally and I applied that thinking and uh, and so when you see me paint now I do some digital tricks here and there but it really is um, traditionally influenced. Hitting my last little things here. So once again, this is our last Tuesday live stream. And uh, man, what a cool bird. Mm -hmm. I love this bird. I love this bird. Freaking love Duncan. Freaking love Duncan. I freaking love you Duncan. Me? If you call me the mayor of Duncan. <laughs> uh, so once again, this is our last Tuesday live stream. We're going back to just Fridays. Um, we have to get more work done. That was the whole reason we stopped doing two a week before. I just can't. I can't get enough work done when I'm doing the live streams twice a week. So we got to get back to it. And uh, man, I like this one. I like uh, I like the colors in this. Man, I'm glad we did that yesterday. Yeah, that was fun. It really was. Uh, and also, I want to remind you, Tony Cipriano's um, course on how to sculpt in ZBrush is up for pre-order right now. So if you go to creatureartteacher.com, you can... Uh, find that and I really re if you've ever wanted to learn how to do any um, sculpting digitally in ZBrush this is going to be the course for you and that one of the great things you know the person just asked me about my traditional approach and if it helped me um, Tony comes from a traditional background in sculpting and um, and he talks about it in the in the course actually about how that having that background has really helped him Digging it, digging it. So here's the reference. I'll get them side by side. You can see that the, I did a little bit different with the bill. There's our two images side by side. But it's close. 
It's under the uh, photo for the. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. For the instant, instant viewers. There's our referrals. Here's our. Oh, you know what? I do have to change a couple things here, Dustin. One more thing. I, yeah, now that I see it. Let's see. The one more I thing. I understand it better. Do we get the one more thing? Yes. Yeah. It's official. The one more thing has started. It's official. It's official. You're it official. It has been done. <laughs> Can Dustin do the live streams on Tuesdays instead of instead doing uh, voiceovers? Just kidding. <laughs> hey. Alright, so I want to get this a little different now. Let me just do this on top, it'll be easier. Just downloaded a ZBrush Core Mini, uh, which is uh, the basic for beginners. Will the course be Will the course be good, or would I need the Pro version to follow along the course? For oh no, I don't think you'll need the for Pro version. Uh, Nick, do you know? Can it, can uh, the is it? You're talking about ZBrush Mini? Yes, Core Mini. Core Mini. Can they use that, Nick, for the uh, for the course, or don't you know? Because I'm not sure about that. Dustin, can you do the duck season? <laughs> Please. <laughs> I, I can't. I can't do that right now. <laughs> Getting it to feel like skin, and a little pin feathers coming off of the skin. But I'm saying Dustin should do the Tuesday live streams. H how about new? <laughs> Dante just started her own YouTube channel. It's called Hundred Hobbies. Ah. And she goes, Vedanta loves to do all kinds of different things. And so she started a YouTube channel. Right now she's just got the introductory video on. But she's literally going to do a hundred different things. And she's going to take you through how to do it. It's everything from cooking to doing stained glass to painting, doing music, singing, how to, how to create a video. <laughs> she's doing that. Have you ever met artists named Brian Froud? I know him. I know of him. Uh, we know of each other, but we have never met. Do you like his designs? Uh, yes, I very much do. Nick says he believes that will work for the course. Uh, does your Cintiq have uh, physical hotkeys like the Intuos tablets? And if so, how do you use them? No, my hotkeys are just my keyboard. They got rid of the hotkeys on the sides. Even the magnetic ones? Yeah. Just, yeah, so it doesn't have any buttons whatsoever? No, nope, no buttons whatsoever. Wow. There we go. I think we got there. The only thing I have left to do now is combine these. Nope, let's do this. Put it all into a folder. Oh. Okay, we gotta copy that. No, we gotta put all of this into a folder. And I'm gonna copy that folder. And I'm gonna, oh my gosh, merge this 
group, and then I'm going to grab some light here. I'm going to set this to color dodge, and I'm going to drop. Whoops! I'm going to drop the opacity down to about 10%. Turn that off. I'm going to grab my soft round. I'm going to come in here. And I'm just going to. Brighten up a few areas. Like he's getting hit with light. You sound snotty, Dustin. Yeah. You got the you got the allergies? I think it might be the, this fan here. Giving you the allergies? No, not the allergies, just I don't know. It's weird. Are you okay? Hey, are you, are you okay? I'm fine! Are you okay? What do realism artists think of abstract art? Some abstracts look like big blobs to me. Just curious. Well, it's... I think that uh, appreciating it takes time. I think most young artists, and I think a lot of self-taught artists, um, that haven't learned, I guess, for lack of a better way of saying it, it sounds snobby on my part, but um, uh, don't get it. Don't get. Uh, I think there is bad abstract art. Don't get me wrong, but there's a lot of great abstract art out there. One of my favorite abstract artists um, is Franz Klein, and uh, it's very, very. Uh, his work is very almost uh, like calligraphy in the way that he created his images. If you look him up, Franz Klein, um, he's got a. I I approach my realism when I'm doing full images. Uh, I think about his work and the way that. His work sits on the canvas. Are you a perfectionist? Do you, uh, do you yes. ever not like or destroy your work? I don't destroy it. I don't have a tantrum. But yeah, there's there's images I don't like. Absolutely. Absolutely. What do you think? Think we're done? I think so. Yeah. The real question is, uh, does it have voice recognition technology <laughs> in a lift? It's Scotland. In Scotland. Eleven. 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 Open the doors, please. Do you count the number of drawings you've done in live streams? No. Pretty sure we're definitely over the hundred mark at this point. Oh yeah. <laughs> There we go. There's our our uh, trumpeter hornbill. That was pretty fun, eh? Yeah. From yesterday, from Nature Encounters, we are at Nature Encounters in Winter Garden, our Winter Haven in Florida, Winter Haven. Central Florida. And uh, we went down there and photographed yesterday, and this is one of the be beautiful birds that we photographed. And, uh, and that's my hand in the reference, by the way. He was, this is a young guy, and uh, hand reared, and so he loved having his neck scratched. He wanted me to scratch it, and so I scratched it for him, and uh, he was pretty cool. Pretty darn cool. Nice little bird. Little birdie. 
How's this bird? Pretty bird. One of the things I missed. One more thing? Yeah, one more thing. <laughs> one of the things I missed on here is, and it's very distinctive, so I have to get it, is this. Is what? We get the right color. Draw right here. Get the right brush, and we got to go to normal, and I got to go to full opacity. So these birds have these little ridges on their beaks. Not as much here. That's <laughs> I got that Dumb and Dumber reference. I didn't even realize I made a reference. What's that? I guess there was something that I said that is also Dumb and Dumber, and I completely missed it. What was that? I don't remember it already. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there. A little, those little ridges on the beak. They've got those. But there we go. The only thing we have left to do now... Can you achieve the same results in watercolor? Uh, yeah, it would take, take quite a while because it's a lot of pigment to build up. Uh, it would, I think this would be a better one to do in acrylic. But yes, absolutely. I've done dark paintings like this in watercolor. It's just, it's hard to maintain the richness of the color, but I can do it. We could do it. Maybe that might be a good challenge. I was oh. going to do traditional today, but I just didn't have the time to set up. Yeah, that's right. I think I just like subconsciously made that reference. Pretty bird. Oh yeah. Is that pretty bird? <laughs> Hollywood a cracker? All right. <laughs> uh, what do you do when you are struggling with an image for a project that you aren't fond of creating? You got to push through it. You f you got to find something in it that is appealing, uh, whatever that may be. But you got to push through it. That's the only thing I can tell you. You're not going to always have projects that you like. That's part of being a professional artist or illustrator. You just got to get through it. And so um, you just find something. Find something that is appealing that you can wrap your brain around and, and then and push through. So there you go. But anyway, I uh, just want to remind you again, Tony Cipriano's uh, course on how to do ZBrush, how to sculpt in ZBrush, that is up for pre-order right now. So get out there to CreatureArtTeacher.com and grab it because uh, when it goes on sale on August 31st it's going all the way up to full price and you don't want to miss out on having a 50% off uh, getting it for 50% off there you, go. there you go and I also want to remind you if you're a student or a teacher um, we are offering group discounts for our website so if you're a student tell your teacher and have them contact us and uh, or if you are teaching a group and uh, you're interested in having a, a group rate for the website then please let us know go to creatureartteacher.com slash education all right and also i want to remind you that nick and i are doing a five thousand dollar scholarship every month and uh for some lucky artist that is in need out there and so you have until the end of august to put a portfolio in and you will be eligible for a five thousand dollar scholarship this is good for college it's good for online training, uh, such as, you know, if you want to get stuff from Proco or Schoolism or any of the other various online training programs that are out there, you can use the money for that. So go to CreatureArtTeacher.com slash scholarship, and you can get more information there. And trust me, I want you to put forward your best foot as far as putting a portfolio in. So don't rush it. If you don't get it in this month, 
don't worry we're doing it again next month okay and once you get a portfolio in if you don't get chosen you don't have to submit again we have your portfolio once it's submitted we have it forever so don't worry about that that's all I got that's all you got and that's all I got so I'm glad you're able to join us today on uh, creating this little horn bill I love this guy it was a lot of fun I really enjoyed the day yesterday and uh, and if you stay tuned uh, for the birds of prey course you're going to see uh, a lot of stuff from the Birds of Prey, or not the Birds of Prey Center, but the, from Natural Encounters where we went. Uh, some of that stuff's going to make it into the course, especially the Harpy Eagle, which was absolutely incredible. We got some great shots of, of her. Uh, but anyway, I hope you guys have a great week. Remember, this is our last one, so we're not coming back on Tuesdays anymore. But you can still catch us on Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, okay? We're going down, back down to one time a week. I've got to get more work done, and uh, uh, so there you go. So I hope you guys enjoyed today. Uh, go out, have a great week. Put your shopping cart away. Be nice to somebody. Wear your mask. Don't spread the COVID. Man, we went to 7-Eleven yesterday, and Nick, Dustin and I were the only ones in the store wearing a mask. And there's a big sign saying, mask required. And even the 7-Eleven person behind the counter wasn't wearing a mask. It's just, it blows my mind, and people wonder why Florida has become a hot spot in the in the country. No kidding. Yeah, it's just it's so annoying. But anyway, uh, wear your mask. Don't spread the, the 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 disease. And we will talk to you on Friday. Remember, Friday, one p.m. We'll be back to doing our live stream. See you then. Have a great week. Hey guys, thank you guys so much once again for watching. Glad you guys enjoyed this stream. And for any newcomers, if you're interested in any wildlife photos, you can check out my. Instagram at Dustin underscore Blaze, where I post uh, new photos up there every once in a while. And also on Creature Art Teacher, I have my own reference bundles that you can purchase to use for your own artwork, if you're interested in any of that sort of stuff. And they're all Florida-based wildlife, like gators, otters, a uh, couple of birds here and there, including sandhill cranes, which is one of my favorite birds. But uh, yeah, once again, thank you guys so much for watching. See you guys Friday, and... I know a lot of you are not going to be able to make it to the Friday streams, uh, and that's why you came over to the Tuesdays. Hope you guys can make it to, to the Fridays now. Um, and until then, Cowboy Bebop. See ya.